Welcome to Peg Warmers. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to talk about toys. Today, we're taking a look at the HasLab Sky Striker. If you're not familiar with HasLab, it's Hasbro's website that allows them to crowdfund collector toys. Things that will never hit the shelves at retail, but if enough fans back a project, we get some amazing toys. In the past, things I've backed, Hero Quest, a board game they made, the Sky Striker here for G.I. Joe, and the Classified series G.I. Joe His Tank. They've done Marvel Legends toys. They've done um, a, a Cookie Monster talking thing that failed. They've done some Star Wars stuff that's failed. Um, it's not a guarantee. And I find that interesting because... You would think they would know their clientele well enough that they could uh, slam dunk all of these things. Star Wars has been the the hardest, and maybe that's just their fan base. Uh, I love Star Wars, but I don't really collect modern Star Wars toys anymore. I collected Star Wars for a very long time, but I, I just sort of burned out on it. I have the classic trilogy characters I want. I'm not interested in collecting them in a new scale. Uh, so the Black Series doesn't really interest me, despite them being incredible figures. G.I. Joe, I do collect in two scales, and I didn't really want to collect 6-inch G.I. Joe ever, but because Classifieds came out, and it's a cool-looking line, and I'm a huge G.I. Joe fan, I had to dip my toe into the 6-inch scale G.I. Joe stuff. But this is 3 and 3 quarter inch scale. It comes with O-ring figures, so it's exactly right up my alley, even though... I wasn't dying to have another Sky Striker. The Sky Striker is the G.I. Joe's main airplane. It's been around since 1983. This jet has been featured in G.I. Joe comics and cartoons for decades. Back in the 80s, we got the original version, which was super high detailed with working landing gear and working wings. Super cool the way they did it. And then it was reissued for Night Force Post the year 2000, in the 25th anniversary line, they retooled the Sky Striker, making it a one-seater and um, made almost a more rugged toy out of it, um, simplified it a little bit, and we've gotten that mold reused about a million times. You, There are so many paint variants of that. So it was interesting here that Hasbro decided to go back and retool a new version of the Sky Striker with the two seats. A lot of new fun features, um, trying to make it more highly detailed. And I kind of want to talk about the execution today. In the comments down below, let me know if you ordered a Sky Striker. And if you're a Joe fan and you passed on it, let me know why. Was it the price? Was it the pack-ins? I'm just kind of interested in what people's mindsets were on a toy like this. So the Sky Striker came in an enormous cardboard box. And within that box was another cardboard box. And then within that cardboard box, there was the actual box to the toy. As well as a couple trays with add-on features. Now the box to the Sky Striker features beautiful art. It's a reprinting of the original box art. And basically a reconstruction of that original box. Unfortunately, they didn't really fit the toy into that box, and I'm not totally sure why. Um, I think I would have appreciated if they had put all of the wings and fins and missiles and stickers and everything that actually went to the Sky Striker in that art box, and then the trays were just used for the add-on things like the missile dolly and the gas pump and the carded figures. I, I was actually very taken aback as I was unpackaging this. Uh, I like to think about all the different types of styles of collectors as I was opening it. Obviously, somebody could have kept it totally sealed in the shipper box uh, and not enjoyed it at all, but I imagined there were some people that would have wanted to just be a complete, like, mint-on-card collector. So I sort of imagined people keeping the Sky Striker boxed and then the carded figures, but if you had the box sealed, it's not the complete toy. There was lots of loose pieces laying around in these little paper bags and it kind of threw me through a loop because I could imagine somebody that's an o-ring figure collector buying this to sell the jet and just keep the figures I could also imagine somebody that's more of a vehicle person keeping maybe two of the figures to you know put in the seats and then selling the rest of the figures to kind of recoup some money 
and they just sort of made it a really odd thing. Like, if you were going to buy one of these on the aftermarket, if the whole shipper box wasn't sealed, I'd be worried I was missing something because it didn't really come bagged or or boxed in any real way that made any sense to me. Now, I do think Hasbro was trying to go for that premium unboxing experience with this. I didn't have any fun unboxing mine, to be honest. And I don't know if it was the packaging or just my mindset that day. Um, I did actually stop partway through unboxing it. I actually was talking to Hooded Cobra Commander 788. If you don't watch his G.I. Joe reviews, you got to check his stuff out. He's phenomenal. Uh, but I texted him that day, and I was like, I actually took a break. I, I, I couldn't do it in one sitting. I just kind of was feeling, ugh. And I, like I said, I don't know if that was the toy or if it was me. I just couldn't get into it. Uh, it, it just seemed like kind of a hassle. And I know that's not what they meant. So this is an example of one of these trays that was packaged in the box. And it had a lot of the extra pieces in it. And of course, like I said, they were all bagged up. One thing I did think that was kind of fun. Not that too many people, not that too many people were buying this to play with. But there is a little runway strip printed on the box so you can unfold the two trays to make a landing pad. And that's kind of fun if you were going to display your Joe vehicles on a table. If you don't own the flag and you just want to buy like an 8-foot um, folding table, you could put these two cardboard strips on it as a landing strip and park a bunch of vehicles on it. That is kind of fun. I, I do appreciate those kinds of bits of effort. And here's that beautiful printed box. It's a pretty faithful recreation of the original box. It's out of the shot for you guys, but I can see it up there actually above Eternia. I have my original Sky Striker box sitting. It's pretty accurate. I mean, there are some differences. Obviously, we have the 4 plus rating. There is, you know, some different warnings and things. But overall, it's pretty darn accurate uh, of an interpretation of that original box. The back is a little bit glossier. The old G.I. Joe boxes were just like printed on the cardboard there. But overall, I think it's pretty cool. So that printed box was my favorite part of the packaging. The rest of it, I I don't know. It was too much. I, I kind of got overwhelmed with it. Another thing that kind of surprised me, I don't know why I thought this Sky Striker might be slightly bigger than the original, but it's almost exactly the same size. Uh, somehow I felt it was going to be a little bit more deluxe, and um, it's not a problem that it's not bigger. In fact, it's kind of nice that it does fit in with the other one, the vintage one, but just for some reason my my perception of it was that it was going to be somehow a little bit bigger, and then when I opened it, that seemed a little bit less, uh, it seemed a little bit less impressive. That sort of combined with the quality of the plastic i felt like these wings feel uh very thin so my complaint with the wings and this is not a light toy it, it um the the weight of the plastic itself feels pretty good i actually have the vintage sky striker here which again will help illustrate the fact that they are pretty much exactly the same size uh, i do think that the the haslab one might be slightly heavier and maybe my complaints ha have no basis because th these wings are kind of hollow on the underside also. They're thin, but they were one piece. And so I guess these wings just kind of bugged me a little bit. Whoops, lost the afterburner. Uh, they're they're kind of scooped out and thin, but these have a connection point. And I was seeing online that people were actually breaking the wings trying to put them on. So... In here, you can see where it kind of snaps in. Uh, so it was recommended that you unscrew the connector, push the connector in, and then re-screw the wing to the connector to avoid breaking these wings because they do have a lot of flex, and it's tricky because when you put pressure on it, they want to slide due to that mechanism. Now, I'm not saying that's bad engineering. It just kind of is the, the way it is. But it might have been smart to have the a, a, a different way to do that. Right, the clipping action could have been pressing down versus the pushing in, maybe. I, I don't know. But the, like I said, the wings just felt very thin, and you don't want to break a toy like this. But the Sky Striker looks really nice. It does have a fair amount of line work on it that's pre-printed, pre-painted, or tampoed. Um, that looks really, really nice. It does also come with dozens of stickers that you can apply 
So we've got sticker sheets galore. Here's some red, white, and blue stripes. This is the Cobra decals. If you want to make it a Cobra captured plane, I, I don't think anybody's doing that. There's some customized decals here, which these are sort of inspired by the 25th anniversary ones, where you had one specifically, decals specifically designed for Flint and Snake Eyes and things like that. It's got the Killer Whale decal, I don't understand. But it also has the classic um, Sky Striker decals here. Anytime, baby. I guess that's like an actual Tomcat decoration there. But you get lots and lots of options with it. There's some instructions here on how to put the stickers on, perhaps. Or maybe this is just the other features. The blueprints. Uh, does it have sticker locations? Yeah, it does. There's the sticker locations. Oh, and there's stickers for the some of the supporting vehicles and things as well. So that's that's nice. Um, I have not stickered mine yet, so that what you see on it now is how it came out of the package. One other thing you may notice that's different between this Sky Striker and my original one is the color of the tail fins. The box art to the Sky Striker features black fins, but the toy came with gray fins. The HasLab Sky Striker actually came with both type of fins. And to kind of distinguish it from my original, I figured I would do the box art colors. So I have this box of extras here, and I want to kind of talk about it a little bit. You get two canopies. This one is uh, sort of two-sectioned. So you get two canopies, I think. Maybe maybe I got two and I wasn't supposed to. I, I, I'm not even sure there. I got the second set of fins. There's lots of blast effects for the missiles. Here's that fuel pod that goes on the bottom. This is kind of the handle when you're a kid, uh, but this one, it's not, it does, you can't be attached, you can't attach the pod and attach the stand to this Sky Striker. There's like a radar array, lots of little cool add in things. There's a ladder for getting into the Sky Striker. That's actually a very cool. You know, we all see the Joes in the cartoon. We all see the Joes in the cartoon or Luke Skywalker get into his X-Wing with a ladder, but you don't have them with the with the toys. So here is one of the stretch goals. This is the support equipment. I'm not quite sure how it works exactly. I mean, you have the weapons rack here and the fuel pump, but on the flag where these kind of originated... This vehicle has a seat, and a guy can drive it. Uh, it still sort of has the handles here, but there's no seat. So I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, remote control. Uh, these also feel very cheap and hollow compared to the original ones. Um, it's, it's a different type of plastic. This is um, more like a modern vehicle plastic. It's not that brittle plastic that old G.I. Joe vehicles were made out of. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just has a different feel to it has this rack that can hold various missiles, and this can be unplugged. I There we go. I know I had done it before. And it also comes with an engine cover to cover this up more like the vintage aircraft carrier toy. But like I said, there's no seat here. And then you have the little gas pump station. It has a little wind-up rubber hose here, which seems like it's easy to get tangled. The hose is much more rubbery than a vintage um, aircraft carrier hose. The vintage aircraft carrier hose was more like that black wire that would come with G.I. Joe's for some of their accessories. But these are kind of nice little display pieces if you don't have a flag, um, you know, to be able to kind of make a full scene. And the ladder can even hook on the side of this missile rack if you're taking this out to do maintenance or, or to get the the... Jet ready for a mission, you can take the ladder out there with you, which is pretty cool. This Sky Striker also comes with a stand. It's pretty neat. It's an articulated base. It kind of looks like a piece of the flag, perhaps. Um, or just the stand that a model kit might go on. There's places to attach extra armaments to it. And it can pivot so you can put your Sky Striker on display in a flight pattern, which is really fun. 
compared to just having to have it sit stationary on your desk or a shelf. And then let's talk a little bit more about the main Sky Striker itself because I, I've kind of touched around a lot of it, but overall view of it. I'm actually going to get rid of these guys here. So the Sky Striker has its wing extension feature just like on the vintage toy. I got no place to hold this because it doesn't have that pot on the bottom. So this slider here controls the wings, but unlike the original Sky Striker, it doesn't make the landing gear come out. So for once, we can have it land on the deck of the aircraft carrier and have the wings in to take up less space and storage. There is a rester uh, cable hook down here. That's actually what makes the landing gear pop out, which is pretty nice. Some people have complained that the landing gear doesn't quite support the weight of the Sky Striker. I did a couple of not real play, but slightly rough landings with this on a table. And I think I only had the landing gear fold up once on me by accident. So I think they did an okay job with that. There are a lot of other additional little features. This flap on the Sky Striker moves more than it did on the original. We do have removable engine covers on the sides here, although that was part of the original Sky Striker. Whoops. So that's kind of carried over, but there is some coloration in there. There's two different tones of plastic, which is really kind of nice. The intake turbines here on the front of the jet are silver, which looks really nice. You've got the engines in the back, um, and you can pull those out. They actually have the turbines on those painted gray. This is a feature that I don't think matters that much. I mean, it's kind of neat. You could take these out if you want to pretend to do maintenance to it. And I think these might fit on the cart vehicle. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I don't feel like that's super necessary. Uh, but it is necessary for them to come with them. My buddy Hooded Cobra Commander 78 didn't get those engine pieces with his. He's been dealing with Hasbro. I need to check up and follow up with him to find out if he ever got those because that is ridiculous to not get all the parts. There is a panel on the side here that comes off to allow you to plug the ladder in. I am having a really hard time getting it to come loose. I'm actually worried about scratching up the tampo. So I don't know what the trick is for that. And it's not really explained on the instructions at all, but somebody found it early on online, like discovered that and shared a picture. Uh, that's a little bit annoying that I can't figure it out. but I can't quite get it to come out. And like I said, I don't want to booger up the the deco for something that I, I probably will never actually do with it. Um, I'm probably just, in all honesty, not going to display it with the ladder attached, despite it being a cool feature. As I mentioned before, the, that canopy can open. There is a lot more detail in the cockpit this time around. And of course, you do have the two seats with the parachutes. So both pilot and co-pilot have removable seats. There is a option to pop these open. You kind of squeeze the sides. And then the cloth parachutes will open up. And I'm sure these are a pain to pack in there really nice. But I feel like I have to show them off. This is such an upgrade compared to the like trash bag plastic parachutes that came with the original. Uh, so cloth parachutes are really nice. They've got the Sky Striker Eagle. Well, I lost the whole seat. Uh, but that's really cool looking. It has like a little plastic clip here to attach it to the seat. Oh, it's a more of like a textile connector there, but they work. Like that is really neat. Again, probably not something we're going to be doing with these because it's a collector toy but a pretty cool feature to be able to include for sure. So I think this is a really, this is a high quality update of the original Sky Striker. The fact that the Sky Striker was produced for multiple years in the original line makes it something that's not super hard to come by if you want one in your G.I. Joe collection. Plus then there were newer versions of it made. So did this need to be a HasLab? I don't really know. I don't, I don't actually even really think so. But they did a great job with it. I'm trying to think of what they should have done in its place. It is such an iconic piece that maybe it does make sense. 
If they had chosen to do something more rare or more unusual from the G.I. Joe line, it might have been too esoteric. This is a basically real-world jet. Um, it's famous through the G.I. Joe brand from the toys and the comics and the cartoon. So it probably was a good choice, a smart choice. Just like the HasLab for classifieds is the Hiss Tank. That's less real world, but it's still super iconic for the brand. So it was probably a great choice. But in many ways, doesn't really offer anything new to G.I. Joe collectors. It's, it's a nice rehash of something old. Perhaps some of the most exciting things about it, though, were the possible tiers, the things you could unlock. I showed off the little tow vehicle and the fuel pump. That was a tier. And then after that, it was mostly figures that were additional tiers. I have not opened my O-ring figures that came with this set yet. Some of these are, again, just kind of rehashes, and some of them are something kind of new. So I have similar opinions of them. Here we have Ace, the pilot to the Sky Striker. I mean, you can't really make a Sky Striker without an Ace figure, but again, this is a total rehash. He's never been released on card before, but Ace with his fishbowl helmet is not really hard to get because they made so many of them. Um, but again, you had to put him there. So this is kind of standard, sort of expected, not really that interesting personally to me, but they did give us a co-pilot in Failsafe. Failsafe is a Geo that never existed before, but was featured in the card art. There was a pilot in the back seat of the Sky Striker, and it was never explained who he was. He looked maybe a little bit like Airborne, maybe a little bit like Grunt, but there was also decals on the side of the Sky Striker that had names. And Ace's name was one of those stickers. And the other one was Wayne Ruffle. And Wayne Ruffle wasn't the name of any of the Joes. So uh, Wayne Ruffle was actually sort of a, an inside joke with somebody that worked at Hasbro. But now there's finally a Wayne Ruffle figure, and they came up with the codename Failsafe. He's a radar intercept officer, and he's a pretty nice-looking figure. He's mostly ripcord. But he's got a nice green um, flight suit to him. It doesn't really match Aces at all, but it matches that original box art. He's got a helmet and he's got a gun. This piece is a kind of a nice add-on because it's something new to the G.I. Joe brand. One of the other upgrade tiers where you could get additional things to go with your Sky Striker was a flight suit Scarlet. This Scarlet figure uses the Ace body, has a Scarlet head inside it. The suit's painted up in a very different kind of color scheme, almost the Filmation Ace colors. And um, I'm not sure what the thought process was. Scarlet flew the Sky Striker a lot in the cartoon and never wore a flight suit. Um, but it does, it is cool, and it's something new. You could head swap Ace onto this body to have a cartoon Ace. Um, and Scarlet's a super popular figure, so she's not a bad choice. One of the weirdest things about this figure, everyone has found out, is that her crossbow doesn't have a handle. She's just sort of supposed to rest it in her arms, which is maybe more like a traditional crossbow, but not like Scarlet's accessory. Uh, it was an unusual choice. It is cool to see her carded like this, kind of a fun figure. I probably will open this one. Uh, Failsafe, I'm definitely opening, and, and Ace, because he's got to go in the Sky Striker, I think. Some of the other figures that were offered to tease us and kind of get us interested in the Sky Striker involved parts that were sort of shared to, to cut down on costs. They had used a bunch of ripcord parts for Failsafe, so they offered a ripcord repaint as Night Force Ripcord. So this is the, you know, basic ripcord body. No camouflage this time. He's dressed in black with some green details. He would have actually looked really cool in camouflage like the vintage figure if they could have done like black and gray or something or black and dark green. I think that would have looked phenomenal, but this still looks really good. He's got his little rubber parachute there. He's got his gun. His helmet, hopefully, is in here somewhere. I think it's inside the parachute. Hard to say. I think it's in there. Pretty sure I can see it. Yep, I can see it. I have been a little conflicted about keeping this one carded just because it looks so nice, and the Night Force guys only came in two packs, so I don't have a Night Force carded figure in my collection. Um, and I just think this is kind of a nice display, but I think I will open it because 
it's just kind of cool. It's something different. It adds to a sub team, a fan favorite sub team. The other tier that we were supposed to get was a flight crew for the Sky Striker, a yellow and red ripcord repaint with the little lightsaber flashlight batons that guys use on the deck of the aircraft carrier to guide in the jets. Um, they looked really cool. I mean, just a really neat idea, something that lots of fans have custom done over the years, something I really wanted. I was really hoping we were going to get them. They didn't get funded, so they didn't get made, which is a huge disappointment. But in an odd twist of events, and, and perhaps as Hasbro was trying to give the Sky Striker the push it needed, they threw in three figures that weren't announced as a tier, and they're all Cobras. So there's a set of Cobra stickers if you want this to be a stolen Cobra jet. And they gave us three figures that pretty much just used parts they had already created for their new O-Ring series. We got a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. This one, I, I think I might leave carded. Um, I have no real need for a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. I don't really think the logo is interesting. It's, it's historically interesting, but for a figure to display loose, I don't really care. I have the original Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander, who is actually historic. So I think this one I might just leave carded, um, just to kind of hang up and have at least one figure from this set carded and on display. They included a Cobra Trooper, and this guy seems to be perhaps based on the cartoon. He has flesh-colored hands instead of wearing gloves. He's got a little bit of gray piping on his shoulders and his knee pads and things like that. He's a nice-looking figure. A little funny to include a, a single army builder in a set like this that we'll never be able to get multiples of him. But, all right, if you're going to throw him in to try and entice people to buy the whole shebang to try and get us to that next tier. And then the coolest figure that they added, um, who takes his inspiration from that ground crew we didn't get, is the Cobra ground crew Ramp Rat. So this is a Cobra Trooper, but he has the ripcord parts to kind of give him like a deck crew suit he's got the little lightsaber flashlights there he also comes with a mortar i i don't know why he has a mortar um but he's really cool something totally different and i really appreciate that from hasbro so if i were to rank these figures ramp rat's probably my favorite although he doesn't actually have anything to do with the sky striker unless you put the stickers on him he really would get displayed with my Cobra Rattler. He's probably my favorite. Then maybe... Ripcord, just because he looks cool. Um, then probably Failsafe, because he's something new to the brand. Then Scarlet. Then... The Cobra Trooper. Swivel Arm Overing Cobra Commander is kind of neat. But something we sort of own. And then Ace is the least interesting of them just because he's exactly a redo of what we already have. Um, not to knock it, I'm trying, I don't mean to be super negative about the Sky Striker and Ace. Uh, that's what we were buying. Uh, but I was most excited about the new things it was bringing to the Sky Striker. So the base that it can sit on. The weapons rack piece is kind of cool. Um, new versions of figures to go with it that are totally new. Um, the, the ground crew, that kind of stuff. That's what really excites me for a brand like this, a brand that's old. Um, what new things can you bring to the table, Hasbro? That's what, I, what really gets me excited about it because I've been collecting it for a long time. I have most of the vintage stuff that I want. Um, so I'm looking for vintage-inspired new things, not just rehashes of the stuff I already own. That's just my personal opinion. I would love to know in the comments down below what you guys think of the whole set the tiers that we missed, and we got close to it. Did you buy a Sky Striker? Are you happy with it? Did you get overwhelmed, underwhelmed? Are you ecstatic? Would you buy another O-Ring vintage toy that was basically an upscale? Would you buy another O-Ring style improved? Would you buy another O-Ring scaled would you buy another O-Ring style plussed up vehicle like the Sky Striker if they chose to do the Stinger Jeep or the Tomahawk? I'd have to buy the Tomahawk. It's my favorite vehicle. But a lot of the, uh, I don't I don't know, what, what would they do? The Rattler? Um, again, the Rattler, we have the old one. We have newer releases. 
The Rattler could be good. Uh, the landing gear on that breaks pretty easy, so maybe they could fix that. I don't know. I have no idea what HasLab has in store. I am very glad I backed it, even if I do sound a little bit down in the the review. I I think I set the bar so high, and they really did probably hit my expectation, but I somehow expected to be blown away. And um, I set the bar really high for my expectations of this thing. And I think they aimed high, and I think they did reach high, but I, it just didn't blow me away because it's sort of just the reissue. Now, maybe the longer it sits down here, and as I get stickers on it, and I start putting the guys in it, maybe I'll fall in madly in love with it and if that happens i will let you guys know i don't regret the purchase um but it's you know it's another sky striker and i've had this one for a couple decades and i paid two bucks for it at a flea market one time so you know i i, I don't know what to tell you the sky striker is cool i guess i should be happy for everyone that they got it um yeah what what could Hasbro do next? Did I cut too many corners on this review? Should I have had more close-ups and gotten the figures in it and had all the stickers on it before I did it? I feel like it was going to take me forever. It felt like this video took me a long time to get put together just to this point. Um, I may come back and do a follow-up to it once I get the stickers on it and once I get some of the guys out of the package. We'll see. Probably a lot of that has to do with the response to the video. If people watch this video and are saying in the comments they want to see more about the Sky Striker and see if my opinion improves on it, let me know. Do me a favor and hit that like button on this video. Share it with a friend that's into toy collecting. If you have the means and want to support the show on Patreon, that's amazing. Thanks so much for everybody that is supporting the show by watching or being a member of the Patreon. And thanks for hanging on the peg with me.